What's up, skids? What's up, skids? Now I gotta find this. Boom, ch -ch boom. What's up, peeps? Share this motherfucker, get her going, right? That's good. What's up? What's up, guys? Always well and safe. Always staying well. Went for another ride, bike ride today, so that felt good. Fucking felt good. It was nice today. It started out a little rainy. But, uh... Ah, we're fucking moving. Let's turn this shit down. Matt Warner. What's up? What's up? No, we're not playing uh, badminton, and we're not going to kill the grade 11 classes like we did. <laughs> no badminton in this live stream. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Trevor Sharkey. What's up, man? Yeah, I went for a sweet bike ride today, too, man. That was fucking great. Feels good to get back on the bike. I got a nice one, too. I just need to get bigger tires. I'm a fat guy now, right? So I'm riding 24-inch now, so, too, I got to get just wider tires. What up, guys? CDN represent all day. All day. I think we're doing it right. I think we're doing it right on the wrong side of town, right? Isn't that what they say? Isn't that what they say? Let's see here. Just adjusting the lighting a little bit here and there. Checking it out. Seeing how buff I look. I think we're good. I think we're good. Uh, oh yeah, hold on Trevor. Hold on. Right, there's a friend of mine that's watching right now. This guy Trevor Sharkey. Back when we were young, like young, young, I'm 45 myself, so fuck, when was that? Early 80s, 81, 82, 83, 80, 81, 82. Him and I, we used to uh, race together a lot because we were just friends growing up and everything like that. Pro, we used to race pro pretty much. And uh, yeah, we were BMX racers back in the day, but uh, I, still got a, I still got a couple crusty trophies. A lot of them have broke, man. I've moved so much. It fucking sucks ass. Uh, oh, that one's 85. So this one is Stony Creek, fourth place. So that's pretty cool. And uh, what else we got? This one's a fucking crusty one too. It's 1983. This one's a little busted up. But uh, yeah, man, we used to race Pro BMX back in the day. And stupid me, I was like, oh, none of my friends are racing anymore. I'm going to stop. Yeah, it was a fucking great idea. Look where it got me, talking about death metal. <laughs> Anyways. It's 
going on here, Internet? Buddy's Blood of Christ from London, Ontario. Gonna get it going for a bit before I let more people jump in. Actually, just gonna grab another beer. Cosmophytic Corpse and Grotesque Infection are the greatest bands ever. Rip 
representing Canadian today. Wearing the shades, gotta wear the shades today. Because the future's so bright, right? Kelly! Kelly! Chandler on base there. Guys, that's blood, the blood of Christ, not blood of Christ from Ohio that we talked about uh, with with Paul and Jay that night. Uh, this is the blood of Christ from London, Ontario, Canada, and they've been around since shit ninety four, ninety three, ninety four, and uh, yeah, they they kind of they put out some demos, an album, or whatever. And we're gonna talk about that because Craig is a is a is a is a big part of this too. Uh, but they came back a few years ago, and I ended up getting to work with these guys. We made a video for them. Uh, fucking rad, kind of old schoolish, you know, nuclear blast style dismember through the graveyard music video. So uh, if you want to check out the Blood of Christ. And you can order all their stuff through CDN Records also. We're going to talk about that. But, uh, yeah, that's these guys, man. Fucking straight-up dudes, man. Love them. Known them for quite a while, too. And uh, the drummer, Jay Longo, he was in a... He's, he was in a... He, he played in a whole bunch of other bands. Um, there was a Mullet Corpse. That was like a techie grind. Fucking unbelievably tight. Uh, I believe he was in Coprophemia for a bit. Uh, he was playing with. He played with Baptized in Blood. There again, they're out of London, Ontario. They weren't. They weren't death metal or anything, but they were signed to Roadrunner. They were like the last stint of like metal bands to be on Roadrunner, and uh, he did some big tours with those guys. Um, and he also he's toured with. Um, he toured with Incantation as their drummer a few years back. Uh, one of the drummers couldn't get across the border. John McEntee's known Longo, Jay, for quite many, many years. And, and McEntee's a big fan of uh, the blood of Christ also. So whenever they come around town and they need some help, they call up fucking Mr. Longo there and uh, he jumps in. And the last, I think that tour, literally, he probably had, I'm pretty sure he only had maybe a week and a half, two weeks to, to, to memorize a set list. And literally, though, like, if you're being called by incantation to fucking jump on board, like, I mean, you, you grab that opportunity, but still, like, you have two weeks to learn, you know, how many songs are going to be in a set. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve songs. Holy shit, man, that's fucking pressure. But uh, props, man, he did it. Fucking pulled it off. Good drummer. Good drummer. So, uh, yeah, we're just doing some Canadian here or there. Immortal Possession of Votov. Oh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do this. Let's do this, Mr. Uh, John Duke. Look at that there. Oh, no, can't, can't give out the addresses. <laughs> that was close, though. If you want to send me stuff, then you can just send me stuff. You know, it's, that's okay. Totally. Let's see what we got here. Mr. John Duke, bass player in uh, Photov and Immortal Possession. 
More Canadians, man. More Canadians. Cheers. What do we got here? Oh boy. We got some stuff. Good old Santa Claus. What do we got here? What's up, Brad? Oh, Mark James ordering the grotesque infection. Unbelievable, dude. It fucking turned out unbelievable. All right. Casket Crusher, what's up? Oh, shit, yeah. Look at this. God damn. Look at this. Oh, jeez. Stuff's flying everywhere. All right, let's turn this down a bit here, just in case. Yo, Cam, I know you're a big collector, so I threw in a few extra things. I hope you will enjoy. Thanks for your continued support of Votov and Immortal Possession. All the best, my friend. Fucking A, man. Dude, like, this is fun. Letters, packages. Oh, like, <laughs> this is amazing, man. Immortal Possession and Votov. And obviously, they're, uh, they're signed to... Look at these fucking patches. Fucking sweet. Votov. Some fucking sweet ass stickers. I don't know if you can see that, guys. Got some fucking sweet ass stickers. Right, we're just going to the next. Oh, I don't want cattle. I want more blood of Christ. What's going on here? Let's go. Here we are. Here. Bam. Why there's two videos. Some fucking sweet Votov stickers. Representing fuck Canadian death metal, guys. Fucking sweet. Like, that's a sick logo, man. Like, that is a sick logo. Immortal Possession. Unbelievable. Seriously, man. We, we, whenever we talk about bands, you fucking check out the bands. Like, seriously. Some fucking so Votov. Ah, damn, man. I totally appreciate it, guys. You guys are the fucking... You guys are the bomb. B-O-M-B. -B. Fucking Votov. Kick ass. Metal in the mail rules, man. It is. It's Christmas. It's fucking Christmas whenever this shit comes in. It's unbelievable. I don't know if anybody else does it, but I... <laughs> I check the freaking mailbox like a lot. <laughs> Is there something here? No, no, nothing's here yet. Oh, no, mailman come? No, no, mailman's not here yet. Oh, it's hilarious. But, uh, yeah, man. We gotta support our scenes as much as we can, right? That's what we do. Shout out to obituary. It's always about obituary. But you know what, though? First time I seen Obituary was End Complete Tour. They played with Cynic and Sinister in Buffalo. Unbelievable show, man. Unbelievable. And End Complete, I fucking love that album. And then uh, World Demise, totally dug that album. I was kind of, you know, I don't care. Was I ended up buying the single because that's what they sold, right? The, it was like instead of the 45s like they did in the old days, that was the singles. They would release like CD singles, EPs. It'd be like two or three songs, bonus track, a live tune or something like that. Um, and I didn't mind it. Like there was, there was, a, there was a still that the obituary groove, but there was something else to it. And then World Demise, fucking love that album, man, love that album. But then, but then, Back from the Dead came out, and I just wasn't feeling it. And then from there on in, I just wasn't feeling it. I just, ah, nothing against Obituary, but that was my last favorite album was, uh, was World Demise. I got the flag somewhere too. It's fucking sweet. I don't even know where to do with it. Still organizing stuff. Shouldn't really be though, but. Yeah, promo stations. The radio, the radios would always send out the, uh, the slips 
for a promo all the time too, right? Uh, hold on a sec here. Because uh, cause I've been doing media stuff for a while too, whether writing for magazines or did radio too for a while. And, you know, we had our own fanzines and everything like that. And they would, like, you'd get these slips, right? And that's what they would, and, and that's what they'd send out to everybody because, I mean, internet wasn't there. Uh, tapes were phasing out. So then they started sending CDs, but not the full covers with, like, giant bios on the back too, right? So you'd get these slips. And you just, you just keep getting slips and just get slips and 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 especially with the, the, um, the later, the later slips, when people, when people started taking these advanced copies, even these, and started throwing them up to rip, uh, like on uh, torrent sites and everything, right? Like LimeWire and Napster and all that shit, like back in the day, right? So what they would do is each song on these would be like seven or eight tracks, like... The stench of redemption is, I can't even see this. It's like one, one to nine, track one to nine. And then Death to Jesus is like 10 to 16 or 17 or something like that. And they'd start putting voiceovers on it so you couldn't get the full rip. And it would just be like earache, records, promo, every like... 30 seconds or something like that, right? Because they just wanted you to have the gist of it. They don't want you to fucking rip it. You don't fucking rip this shit. Like, that's that's what kills everything, man, is fucking posers that are taking this shit, our hard-earned money, our work, our recordings, our movies, everything, and taking it for themselves and putting it up on fucking, like, all these torrent sites and everything like that so you can download this shit. Like, what the fuck are you trying to prove? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And I just had this conversation with uh, um, with Daniel Osborne, who runs New Standard Elite. Him and I, we go back and forth. We, we, we have some dealings with some stuff. And uh, he was telling me that, because right now, New Standard Elite, if you're not familiar with that record label, they're one of the fucking most brutal, like just strictly brutal death metal labels, front to back. Unbelievable for years too, man. The fucking guys, guys got a fucking roster. And recently, obviously, with all this shit going on, a lot of people have, uh, you know, lent their hearts out and put their stuff up for free just to, you know, so we can pass the time and have things to talk about and everything like that. So he was telling me that, you know, obviously people go in, oh shit, free stuff. Everyone loves free stuff. I get it. But you got to fucking support it in the same time, too. If you're going to fucking rip a CD, at least buy some shirts or some merch or some other stuff, right? So people are downloading the stuff off Bandcamp because you can go on Bandcamp. And I think yeah, I think you can still download the stuff for free. People were ripping the stuff, taking it for free because it's there. But then opening up their own fucking Bandcamps and trying to claim that shit as if they're putting it out themselves or their label or whatever like that. Like as fucking like... It boggles the fucking mind. Like, it makes you not want to do that kind of shit because you get these fucking gearboxes that are just going to ruin it for everybody. And it happens, like, more than it should. It's it's not fair. I get it, man. I get it. We tape trade. We do that kind of stuff, right? But you go out and you fucking buy the merch afterwards if you love it that much. That's the fucking point. Oh, my God. It kills me. It kills me. So... That's what Eric started doing after a while, too. So, uh, yeah, good times, man. It's true. Fucking, yeah, man. Give those sad faces, too. Yeah, 
Dan fucking Daniel Osborne, man, he's the fucking dude. It's a shame, but anyways. But uh, yeah, this is fucking. Uh, make sure to check out uh, some Blood of Christ. Super good dudes. Super good dudes. I'm gonna chat with you guys later. Chat with you later. Chat with you later. Figured out my volume. That ba dang. Hey, how's it going? Oh, there. He, look at that. Yeah. See, he's not a mystery. He has a face. <laughs> <laughs> 30 years in the business and I'm finally on the internet, eh? Honestly, man. It's it, it, it's funny, too, because, I mean, him and I, we've never met up until we went to Quebec Death Fest last year, but we've had dealings with each other for the last 30 years, somehow, somewhere. It's the Canadian scene. The undergrounders stick together. You're going to know each other either by name or band or zine or something like that. And I literally, you know, I fucking whore myself out like like it's it's ridiculous actually. <laughs> Get my face out there, right? You got to know who I am. And this guy, you know, you go on his profile or whatever like that, and it's always just like a dog or something like that. And it's like, well, I want I need to see your face so I know what to look for, right? That's the thing. And boom, there's the man. What's yeah, up? finally, I guess. Eh? Thirty years. Yeah, just a little, eh? <laughs> so I was gonna wear a mask tonight, but then I figured I better not. Yeah, we probably wouldn't hear you, really. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's going on? Bolt Thrower, you, you, you went to that show, right? Uh, yes, I did. I would never miss my Bolt Thrower. <laughs> I've uh, been a fan of theirs since the beginning, actually. When they came to London, Ontario, I couldn't believe it. And uh, we actually got lucky because the drummer passed away not too long after. Unfortunately, yeah. No, totally. Yeah. Um, was, uh, has Bolt Thrower, Bolt Thrower has never been around before, have they, here? I don't think so. I know they played in Detroit, Michigan at uh, Harpo's. Back, back, in, in the day. back in the day, yeah. But yeah, they, ne they, they never crossed the border or anything like that. So they come over here. At, no, yeah, what was that, uh, four years ago, five years ago? 2015. 2015, and that was literally... That was the last time I even seen Jim Konya from Nunslaughter. He was there. Yep. Yeah, he was there. He was handing out all kinds of shit like he does, Mr. Santa Claus, handing out stuff. And, uh, yeah, it was a great show. It was Bolt Thrower, Razor, uh, Abyss. And was there was there another one? Shit. There was a punk band that opened up from um, Quebec. Okay. Right, right, right. Go. Yeah, I don't remember either. So, uh, so what's happening there tonight, Craig? What's going on down in the CDN uh, basement there? Yeah, just the, the normal plugging away. Uh, as you can see, my dog just got in here. Uh, there, there he is. <laughs> just plugging away. Um, you know, it's parcels, just getting parcels out into the mail, and hopefully Canada Post decides to deliver something sometime. I know, right? And and that's the thing too. Uh, again, chat with you, a chat with Matt Calvert, Matt, even uh, Daniel Osborne from like New Standard. Everybody, mail is screwed up right now. So please be patient. Your package is in the mail, like it's coming. We have no control over this. We can't figure it out. There, there's nothing to figure out. Is you put the order, get the order, it's sent out. And it's gonna get there because unfortunately you can't you, you can't ship overseas right now, correct? Uh, there's only a couple countries. I think uh, Germany and England right now. But how long that's gonna take to get there, I have no idea. Yeah. I'm just telling about order stuff. I mail it within two days, and it's in the mail, and there's nothing I can do. I mean, to be honest with you, Canada Post. I'm waiting for parcels from February. So I'm in the same boat as everybody else. I don't have all my trade parcels haven't come in. And you just sit back and hope for the best, like you said, keep going to the mailbox. That's it, man. That's, that's all you can do. And, and we, we try our best. These guys try their best. 
and it's not like it's not like anybody's wants to screw anybody. I mean, that's the last thing we need in this scene is to freaking you know not send out your packages, but shit's getting sent out. So just it's okay, guys. It's okay. <laughs> so CDN Records. Um, when did uh, when did you get this ball rolling? Yeah, probably around 1990 to 92. I decided I was in a band and I I got out of it. And I had been dealing with Remy Cote from, at the time, New World Symphony Records. And him and I had been doing some dealings together. And then I started finding bands for his comps. Uh, I don't know if you remember these. Uh, New World Symphony 1, New World Symphony 2. You pretty well would shit blood if you saw who was on here, Cam. Well, then what? what, uh, what what's on there? What's on there? <laughs> Carcinogen, which is a band that I work with, and I'm going to be putting out their demo again. Um, Fourth Kingdom from uh, Michigan, Blood of Christ, Holocaust, Necropsy, Traumatism, Summertime Daisies, A Thousand Rooms. That was the first one. The second one had Neurotic uh, Mutation, Nefarious, Atheistic Martyr, Awakened Legion, Sacramentary Abolishment, just a ton of Holy shit. Work. Yeah, they were. It was unbelievable back then. I mean, everybody, like you said, worked together, traded through the mail, and I helped Remy out with those. Then I started buying demos. I was buying from our famous friend Richard C. from Wild Rags. I used to buy thousands of dollars worth of stuff from him. Um, I used to buy from Jason from Dying Fetus. Uh, it was in Misery Index now. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to buy from Don Decker, eight of last demos. Oh. Right. I used to buy them by the hundreds. And then it went from that to, I heard a CD of a band from Quebec called Decayed Remains, called Moonlight. And I've always been a really big Sodom Agent Orange fan. That album was like one of my top ten. And I heard it and I said, i got to put these guys up. So I signed them. It was my first release, Decayed Remains. It's called One Man's Fate. Um, loved it. Still listen to it to this day. And kind of went from there the first I'm going to say 10 15 years I kind of learned my way there's a lot of times where you're in debt fifteen thousand dollars then you get out of it then you're back in it in about the last 10 to 12 years I really figured out how to do it where I can sustain it money coming in goes right back out goes right back out into the, uh, the bands um, and I've been lucky because Canada has produced a lot of great bands. And they've been willing to sign with me, which I appreciate. And it's allowed me to get to where I am. I mean, my second release was Flesh Feast from London, Ontario. Ah. That is an amazing CD. Where is it? Hold on here. Uh, well, I got the, the Fate of Hated Flesh demo. Uh, that's nice, yeah. Right. So I'm assuming you heard this and then you put out an album? Then I put out this. <laughs> what is it? The Flip. Oh. The self album. Ah. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and then from there, just kept going. Um, I kept finding great Canadian bands that were willing to give my label a chance. Um, it progressed through 20, almost 30 years um, of what to do. Um, I mean, when I first started, there really wasn't the internet. Uh, it was something new. Yep. I mean, we were still tape trading and sending stuff all over the place. Um, but it uh, it turned out that we're now where I've got some outstanding Canadian and international bands now. Um, recently, uh, uh, Centenary from Detroit, Michigan, uh, in Satanity, which was a, an incredible signing. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, but a lot of great Canadian bands, man, from the start with... Uh, the one that I thought would always get me in trouble, anal bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> they were one of the best sellers I ever had, along with Corporphemia. Um, anal bleeding's I mean, Canadian? Yeah, they're from Quebec. Oh. Yep. Well then. Yeah. It was a really good album. Um, <laughs> it, it did really well. The Corporphemia arrived in pieces. Was, uh, it's, a lot of people in Canada don't know, but it's almost a classic now. I've sold so many of them that it's uh, it's worldwide. Wow. And that's one thing that I've tried to do with my Canadian bands. Um, as people can see, my distro is kind of, kind of big. So I trade with as many people as I can to get the Canadian music all over the world. Um, 
in the last couple of years, I've had some great bands. Um, Bastard Son, their album was incredible. Uh, hope I'm going to say this one right. Paraphiliac, another album that just moved like crazy. Um, it's all, all the Canadian stuff is, seems like it really appreciated across the globe. There's the Bastard Son there. There's that fantastic, yeah, fantastic album there. Um, you guys put out the uh, the ending tyranny stuff. There's some yeah. uh, there's some good tech death right there. And yeah, that was with, yeah. uh, Eric uh, Cam really in front. Of, he has Ghost Vision Entertainment. We did a split on that one. Right, right. And what else here? You guys. Oh yeah, there's that. Uh, there's the blood of Christ. You said that uh, you have uh, you have some special uh, uh, copies in your hand there. Oh, yeah. I don't know if Jason's on tonight, but I don't know if he remembers this. Jason that Longo. He, I, yeah, yeah, he's 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 watching. I think he's watching. <laughs> Still sealed with the note, from Jeff. Blood of Christ, frozen dreams. Blood of Christ, the lonely flowers still sealed. Wow. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's the band that's their last album sold out very fast. I'm probably going to be repressing it as soon as this COVID thing ends. But uh, that's a great band. I mean, and they they have interchangeable pieces all the time. Uh, they may get a bass player like Mark, who's just incredible. Their new guitar player is incredible. Uh, the backbone of the band's always been Jason, Jeff, and it's Jason right now. Yeah. Um, and the said the the new singer. I apologize, I don't know the name offhand, but I uh, I think he was in another band from London. But he's he's incredible too. Like the whole band came together on the new album, and it's just it sold rather fast. But you now with COVID and everything, and doing a repress this right now, I'm lucky if I get anything in. So. <laughs> Well, cause yeah, cause I mean, you 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 can send out your uh, request to get stuff made manufactured. Uh, most of the time, you're not able to because a lot of the plants are even down right now. Yeah, yeah, I got three. I call it three in the shoot right now with the insatanity, uh, the new gore worm, which is going to just melt people's faces. Those guys are from up around your area, Hamilton uh, region, and it's just it's an incredible album. Like the first one sold out almost. I think I got like four copies left. Wow. And that's the one, the nice thing, uh, I get all these Canadian bands and I try to move them all over the world trade-wise and I, you know, I hope they are getting more likes than that on Facebook because I think their music is appreciated across the globe. And Canada does have a great history of heavy metal and the newer bands are just continuing right on. Like, Yeah. And they, and 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 they still and they still remain obscure to a degree too because like I chat we chatted before whenever somebody mentions death metal Canada is not the first thing that comes to their mind at all ever. No, no, it's always uh, you know states or Europe. Canada is third, fourth, or fifth. But I'm telling you, Canada has had great bands and has got great bands doing stuff now. Like Quebec's a hotbed of technical death metal, death metal. Uh, I know there's a lot of black metal. It's Toronto. Um, we're now going to have Manitoba with uh, Votov and Immortal Possession, yes. which I cannot wait for those two uh, to be released. The Votov is going to be this summer, and it's it's going to be killer. It's Chuck's vocals are insane. <laughs> fucking right, fucking right. And they, you you bring up Toronto. Um, just even back in the day too, there wasn't it wasn't a huge scene in Toronto. Back then, there was a few bands, but the bands that were there, they were all quality, though, pretty much. Oh, yeah. I remember back in the day going to watch Solus. I know you mentioned them the other day on one of your interviews. I remember seeing them. Um, the hardest problem for me getting to Toronto to see a lot of bands is it's four hours away. Um, Solus, Universal Bloodshed. Yeah, you can see I that. Still got the shirt. Right there, <laughs> right there. Band. This fucking CD, man. We did uh, we did an interview with the bass player John, because uh, he's actually playing in uh, Killer Dwarves now. So oh. uh, yeah, honestly, and uh, I've been meaning. Obviously, we keep missing each other. They played Niagara Falls. I fucking miss it. I go to Toronto. There, he's not around. 
But uh, no, Soulless, man. We ended up playing with these guys, too, back in 99, 2000. We brought, we brought them to St. Catharines. And man, like, it's just one of those bands. They're not like anybody. They weren't like anybody at all. Yeah, Toronto used to have some great bands. Um, a, a really good friend of mine who I haven't seen in a little while, Alex from uh, Horde of Worms. Horde of Worms and Blood Bucket Productions he, he was running. Blood Bucket Productions. Alex had some great... I used to love watching Horde of Worms play. And same with um, Vision of the Night. Yes. Fucking right, man. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Tom... Uh, Peter Wool's Blood. Damn straight. Yeah, Peter. <laughs> There was some great Toronto. I think they're still together, to be honest. I think yes. Peter's still doing stuff. Yep. I they, think it was a lot in Japan. Yeah. Oh, they're huge in Japan, actually. It's unbelievable. I ended up uh, running into yeah. him. Uh, it was about a year and a half ago or whatever. I ended up going to his house and hanging out because uh, that, I forget the last album that just came out. All of it's been fucking, it's, it's, it's like war black metal with some death metal in it. It's fucking like, it's, it's, it's awesome. But I just recently seen uh, on a PR email that there is new material in the works, and I believe there's a lyric video coming soon. So, good cool, old fucking cool. Peter Wolf's blood. But uh, but yeah, yeah Canada. <laughs> um, yeah, but Toronto's always had good bands. Uh, the nice thing about it is they have some good promoters right now too. So once this COVID's over, I think you're going to see a lot of shows. Maybe a couple metal fests. That'd be really nice. Uh, down where I'm at, man, by Windsor. Uh, most of the shows are in Detroit, for Hartford, St. Andrews. Um, the one thing I'd like to see down here, we do have a really good booking agent down here, uh, Black Market Booking, his name's Tyson. He's in a couple of bands. He does a fantastic job of getting bands down here. So I'm hoping to see some CDM bands nice. <laughs> eventually because I sign a lot of these bands and we're going to see them play. Right. I mean, I, I signed another great band that was uh, Damon. Um, I think they're up Oshawa way, Ottawa way, and Ron McLean. Yes. And Sean, yes. Fantastic band. Oh, yeah. Their other, their first album, Descend to Throne, is like a Canadian classic that no one's heard. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, I seen them play with uh, Nephilim and Devour the Unborn. They played at the uh, oh fuck, where was it? I think it was the. Uh, Oh shit! That oh, was one of the bars in fucking Toronto. It was like six years ago or something like that. But yeah, Damon fucking blew my mind, man. It was nice to finally catch those guys. Yeah, that was. Uh, they've always been an excellent band. A lot of. I'm trying to think of everybody, but I got 150 some releases in 30 years. So holy shit! Been, yeah, yeah. It's there's a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> this year you're going to see a lot of stuff too because. Like I said, in Satanity, Gore Worm, Bleeding Spawn from South Africa, um, which their first album sold out in like two months. Wow. Um, I have all those at the plant. Then I got uh, Centenary. I've got Votov up next. I mean, it's just the amount of stuff I have coming. And I, I got a band that I think you really liked. We met him in Quebec. Bleeding Remains, a bunch of young guys from Quebec. Yep. I cannot wait for that to come out. Yeah. It's just... It's it makes me excited. You know yeah. what I mean to have stuff coming out like that, just so people all around the world can hear it. You know. Yeah, you just also, you, you just want to bring it to everybody. Yeah, and, and the biggest too is I'm trying to help the Canadian bands. A lot of Canadian bands, if they release it themselves, they don't really get any push. And I mean, I can only push it so much. Um, but get your name out, get it on as best you can, and if I can help out, like with the I, the three people I have working for me doing promo, I think it gets out there enough that people will know your name. And, you know, my goal for bands, and I'm the honest truth with every band I talk to, and anybody on right now knows, I always tell them, if a bigger label wants you, I'll let you out of your contract in two seconds. I am just here to get your name out, get your name out the best I can, and then you move on to the bigger label. I, I never hold a band back. Never. It's, to me, it's... I love to see Canadian bands on to huge labels like what Beyond Creations done, Archfire, all these guys. I mean, they're top of the heap now. I mean, they are yeah. they're putting Canada on the map. Big so. time, big time. And uh, yeah, like you, like you said, you've released a lot of Canadian stuff too. Just over the last, I don't know, obviously since its inception, but even in just in the last like ten years or seven years or whatever like that, like you've got what Fumigation. 
you put out, uh, Disgust. Fumigation was a good one. That was a really good CD. Then I did a split with them with a band from Quebec, uh, The Path of Ryle. Um, that one went really well. I uh, knew Fumigation is supposed to be, um, I think, by the end of the year. I should have new Fumigation in my hands. Uh, Deformatory was another one. Right. Um, Chuck, uh, that CD was amazing. Uh, the whole band was just... I was in a band, but I'll tell you straight to your face, I was shit. <laughs> <laughs> you see these guys play, and it's just like, yeah, let's use to having hands. <laughs> right. Oh, totally. Um, what else there? You got, uh, you, did you end up releasing uh, the Blastomycosis? Uh, I've done two of theirs, and I think I have a third one. I talked to Tristan and Michael Bain. I should have a third one of that coming. Um I'm trying to think who else. Oh, yeah, and, and, and Tristan from Blastomycosis, he's also the one that does the Ontario Death Fest. Yep, he does that with the, um, Justin Snell, I think is his yes. last name, and he's doing uh, Allie Quinn. Yes. Uh, is a promoter that's helping out. So, yeah, they're all going to do a great job. Um, that's one thing I like. Everybody kind of works together. That's how I, I run CD and Records. As you know, there's a CD and Records family page. Basically, it's every band kind of helping each other out for shows, equipment. You know, if they find a great place to get shirts, they let everybody else know. I try to run it as a family. Uh, I know that sounds kind of corny, but Not at all. we all help their own. It takes everyone else to the next level. If we're all just gonna, if we're all just going to sit back and you know wait for something to happen, it ain't gonna happen. Yep. Because you know, it was that there ain't no money in death metal. You do it for the love of the music, and that's it. Yeah, and all we can do is just help each other and just get more metal going, and at least at least support with like a CD or a shirt or something, just to give them a little bit to make the next album or whatever they have to get to the next show. That's exactly what it is. It's the bands like when I sign a band, I don't own the music. That's the number one thing I tell them. I don't own digital sales. I don't want their money for the digital sales. They are the ones that make the music, so they should make the money. So that's how I try to do it with my contracts. So the fans get something back because they are the ones putting all the money in it. I'm putting time. And in time, you know, if I, I don't break it down to a dollar amount, it's just time. It's something I love doing, so I do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's a lot of time. So, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't tell me that. <laughs> but I enjoy you know what I mean? I've been doing it so long. I got bands in um, Australia, Gape, a uh, great band. I've had bands in Germany. One band I wish I could still put out to this day, I put out their CD. I'd love to do it on vinyl and stuff, is uh, Impure from Germany. Um, that uh, I actually got that band from Brian Baxter from Related. He hooked me up with them. Um, that was one of the first releases, and it was an amazing release, and it's gone kind of underground where nobody knows it anymore. Right. Oh, Brian yeah, Baxter, Brian Baxter from Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. yeah re regurgitation. And he's also playing in, in Balmer. And he was all, he was oh, also yeah. the, he was also the one that put together the Ohio death fest too, back in the late nineties. That's, I went to that. I set up a booth and met him there. What? Oh, fuck man. That was, everybody was there. You want to hear something funny about that? Please. When I went to that death fest, <laughs> I brought a really good friend of mine who had never been to a death fest before, David Gold from Woods of Ypres. He went to that fest with myself and Brian McManus, the singer of uh, Corpochemia. God that was, uh, damn. Fun, that yeah. was a fun week. And there were so many bands that you just, you, I, I don't know, I wish they'd do stuff like that today. Yeah, honestly, that lineup... Literally, if you can track down the poster for the Ohio Death Fest, it was like 99 or 2000 or 2001 or something like that. There is literally, like, it's the who's who of fucking brutal that came out at that time. Like, it was unfucking believable man. Yeah, it was. It was, it was a good time. The Ontario Death Fest has had some crazy lineups, too, in the last couple of years, so... Yeah, awesome. Thanks to you guys for bringing this shit. I'm sorry I haven't been able to uh, make it out to one of them, and I feel ashamed, actually. Uh, but, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in the entertainment business myself, so 
shit just pops up and I have no choice. Like you just have to do it, right? So, I mean, I'm gonna make it there. I want to sit down with you guys, and and I love you, obviously, but don't worry, I'm 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 coming, man. And when when is that usually? Like, uh, is that like September or something yeah, like that? October, I think September. Right, but we, uh, as soon as it, if they are going to announce something, and Tristan Alley and Justin will have it all over the internet. They promote really well. Yeah, no, literally do. And then last year they had uh, what Malignancy, and uh, oh my God, I can't even name the fucking bands. There's just so many bands, man. Vile Driver. There's another band that's on your label too. Uh, shit. They, yeah, that they got a new album coming. I think 2000, end of 2020, early 2021. There's a, a, a another couple bands that I have coming out that I uh, spilling entrails. It used to be um, a, jo- a guy from Texas and a guy from Michigan, uh, Dallas Palmer, and, um, Todd Gore. Todd's not in it anymore, and it's now uh, Zach Shaw from Phalloplasty, oh. the bass player Johnny Fume or something from Fumigation up in Canada. Like it's a uh, it's gonna be a crazy release. It's another of the you know, brutal, brutal death metal. But that's not all I've released. As you know, I've released Battle Soul. Yeah. From, uh, London. It's uh, Ireland, Mike uh, Grunt. Incredible folk thrash, I call it. I yeah. love it. I think it's great. Hex and Clyde. Yes. Another band with uh, John Chalmers. Um, and uh, one I put out that I, I wish people would really get into is Sol- Solace of the Void. It is 25 of Canada's best musicians guesting on it. It's an incredible release. It's uh, black metal, and uh, I'll send you a copy so you can give a list. Solace of the Void. I yeah, know. I, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I remember I, I remember you pushing it out there or whatever like that. Not even not too long ago yeah. either. It's a, it's, a, it's an incredible album. It's uh, 25 musicians across Canada. And it's uh, when I heard it, I was blown away. I was just like, wow. So, got to put it out. No, we got a lot going on this year with CDN. And, and then we have the CDN growl stuff that we're doing. I mean, out of all the demos you and I have redone, I think I've only got eight at Potato left and a couple of resumed. Everything else has moved. Yeah. Um, oh, fuck. Yeah, you, you missed the carnal dissection, everybody. Oh, dropping phones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the carnal dissection, we put out uh, 100 copies each. Those are all gone. That's a that's another legendary Buffalo death metal band that consisted of uh, uh, Dennis Glinsky, who actually played in Tyrant Sin with uh, Mazurkowitz from Cannibal Corpse and shit one of the maybe Bob also I think was in that too and that was like pre Cannibal Corpse like these this is the originals and then obviously Cannibal took over and. Uh, Dennis went on to start with uh, Carnal Dissection, and I brought it up before too. So if you look inside the Tomb of the Mutilated Cannibal Corpse album, the band picture, you'll notice Paul with a Carnal Dissection shirt. That is the demo that we ended up releasing through CDN Growl Records. So you missed out, man. I'm sorry that you fucking missed out on those tapes. Uh, you said the Impetigo, there's still a couple left? There's uh, about eight Impetigo left and about eight of the second Exhumed. Everything else is gone. Uh, the Cranium just came out. Um, it'll start moving eventually. It's just because of the postage right now. Yep. And then we have that third, our other release that you're going to announce next week that I think people are going to freak out for. So. Yes. So we got we got we got a split coming up. Oh, yeah, that thing's going to be killer. But the, that scene like you are, um, back in the day when I was in my band, we actually played Buffalo with Baphomet. Uh, Nick Sagegis, I think that's how you say it. Sagegis, yeah. <laughs> Sagegis, Overthrow, my band, and Baphomet played. Skyrim. I don't know if that might have been the first time we played. Um, the second time we played at a bar that was really small. It had a pole going through the center of the stage. <laughs> And uh, Buffalo's always been awesome. I mean, the, the music coming out of there in the, the 90s and that, man. Honestly. That's why I enjoy doing these reissues and that. And I think people are going to freak. No, totally, man. So, again, let's get back on the you playing with Baphomet or whatever. 
That was, uh, was that before Dead Shall Inherit came out? Yep, that was 1989. Right. And uh, all I remember is the bass player worked at a garbage place where they sorted garbage. Because <laughs> we stayed at this place, and I'll still remember to this day. I asked him, that was a really weird beanbag chair he had, and he said, yeah, I pulled it out of where I worked the garbage. I, uh, I just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I still remember that to this day. I think his name was Gary. I wasn't mistaken. It's Gary. That sounds right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we had some good... Uh, we also played in your area. And I don't know if you remember these guys. Prophecy? Shit, no. They were they're from your area, 1989 demo. We played with them. I still listen to this. <laughs> it, it's good. I mean, for what it was in 1989, we played with a band called Prophecy and I think Overthrow again. But it was just, I mean, it was just neat to trade tapes back then. Oh, um, everybody had a demo. So it was like, give me, give me mine for yours. Everything, like everywhere. That's all it was. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's, uh, yes. Mark James knows his name, Gary. Yes, I was right. It was Gary. Yeah. Gary Shippen, Shippen. Yeah. Mark, I his place. Mark knows. He's a fucking old school dude, too, man. That guy's been around the block also. Holy shit. I see him at all the shows in Buffalo all the time, man. He's a fucking great dude. But that guy is a fucking wealth of knowledge also. Holy shit. <laughs> That's cool. But yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Fucking right, man. So what 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 was the band that you were in? Let's 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 see if anybody wants to go digging for it. Come on. Don't, don't look for it. Any <laughs> shit. <laughs> Being honest with you, the demo was horrible. It was done in a. It, the band was called DNA Death by Computer Annihilation, and the demo is just so bad. It was done by a guy who did church recordings. And we were so young, went in, played live. It's horrible. Our live show was good. When we played in Buffalo, it was, I mean, there was picked and everything. It was, it was fun stuff, but the demo's crap. <laughs> so, it, it's, like I said, I listened to it today, and it's like back in 1989, we thought we were heavy. Now we sound like a shitty green day. <laughs> <laughs> But that's what it was back then. We used to do Pull the Plug as a cover. We used to do South of Heaven and Possess My Beliefs as covers. So our hearts were in it, but... Hell yeah. You got to start somewhere. Yeah, yeah. God yeah. damn, man. Every but, time, man. No, and nobody's first band is ever really that good. <laughs> well, then it moved from that to the label, so everything happens for a reason, I guess. <laughs> I can't play. I'm fucking starting a label. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Those who can't, so fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, and I, to be honest with you, I, I didn't like driving all over the place, playing shows for no money. I mean, that's why I tell band, bands now that do shows, I go, make sure you're getting gas money, please, man. Make it worth your while. Because to hop in a van, travel five hours to say you love doing what you do, at the end you're going to be broke. Yeah. And I know a lot of guys aren't in it for the money, but you got to cover your costs. So Something. I try to get my vans. I tell them, you know, get a rider or something. So at least you get 100, 200 bucks gas. Yeah, literally. But back in day, I'll be honest with you. We would go to Buffalo. We'd sell 100 demos. I'd have so much money in my pockets, U.S. money. And you know back then what it was worth. Holy. A lot. <laughs> So, I mean, it was fun. Um, it led to what I'm doing today, so I'm happy. And it's great that we did, like, the grotesque Confection CD we did together. That thing has been incredible. I'll be honest with you, that thing has flown out of here. I just wish people would get it delivered to their house. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do nothing about it. It's not our fault. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I need nothing about that. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, the grotesque Confection CD... Uh, it's a compilation of their demos, the festering wounds, uh, consumption of human feces, and live tracks taken from a show that I brought. I brought them here in Niagara Falls, Canada, and actually recorded that on a VHS camcorder. And the audio is actually unbelievable on it. So 
There's two tracks on there that were never recorded or released ever. So there's fucking bonuses on there that nobody's heard other than just like the local crews. Unbelievable. Man. And also too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Go on. We some other stuff uh, that I people are going to freak out for by the end of the year. So it's going to be a good year for CDN, Growl Records, and Canadian metal in general. There's going to be some really good releases this year. Um, and the other labels too, like I mentioned, uh, Remy, New World Symphony, who's now PRC Music. Oh. And the funny thing about Remy and I, we both obviously started at the same time. We're the only ones left. Don't get me wrong. There's, there's a lot of Canadian labels. Like there's some great labels, but been around for 30 years. There's there's no one that can say that. Right. There's a lot of labels, for 20 years, but there's nobody who can say they've been around almost 30 years. And Remy and I, he's still doing his PRC music and doing a great job. Um, he's got some great releases coming out. He's got actually a reissue of Soothsayer, the very first album coming out. Oh um, shit. Expunged. Um, some great stuff. So. It's, I like the Canadian scene because everybody seems to help each other. Yeah, it, well, what, because it's a, it, it's, a, it, it's a small scene. I mean, as, as big as Canada is, it's still small, right? I mean, we can pretty much name on two hands the amount of Canadian bands there are compared to, you know, like how many bands are there in Tampa? How many bands are there in California? How many bands, like, it's just, it's unbelievable. So what we have in Canada is a tight group and it seems everybody has a hand in everybody's band somehow, whether it's like, you know, trading flyers or, you know, you've done a show with each other or it, you've been in zines with each other or something like that or tape traded also. So it's it's kind of nice that way. Yeah, the one thing I miss about uh, the Canadian scene right now is the, the zines. I used to love, and I hope you get her on the show, uh, Lori. Uh, eruptions from below. Her zine was awesome. Yeah. It had a lot of Buffalo stuff in it, a lot of Canadian stuff. Uh, band that we're going to be releasing the demo, uh, Carcinogen, they were in there all the time. Uh, interviews, everything. It was, a, I really enjoyed that one. And there was a couple other zines. Uh, I remember Meat Magazine. Oh, yeah. The, yep. the Sepulchral Voice. This is the original. There's, a, there's another one out there right now, a zine called this, but this was the original, Mike Campbell from Oshawa. Uh, I can't... Yeah. Oh, there's another one, there's another one, yeah, there's another issue of uh, Sepulchral Voice there. There's some old school ones. Oh, there's some old relapse. There's some old relapse on there for in the back. Fucking right, man. Relapse had nuclear blast. Yep. No, it totally was. Uh, I don't think I have Lori's uh, Lori Zine here. No. Oh, there's a. Uh, oh, there we go. Here's some. Here's some fucking treats here. Hold on a second here. There's a. Uh, there's one of the older, older. There's one of the older issues. There's an old sepulchral voice vi uh, issue there. Zine. I don't even know when this one came out. I believe this one, this is the one where actually my demo was uh, was reviewed in here. Uh, yeah, there's no, and there's another issue too. He's, he, he tried doing it on the actual like print newspaper for a bit too. So that's fucking awesome, man. But yeah, Lori, we're getting Lori uh, for the documentary. Cause uh, like I said, man, she, she's been an important part of just zine culture in especially in Buffalo and the Toronto area and everything. She had a radio show on, uh, was it 89.5 CIUT for a while too. I forget what it was called, but it was like, it was a pretty fucking death metal show. I and mean, she's, she's grown up death metal forever. And, uh, she was, uh, she was, I do have it somewhere. She was, uh, interviewed in one of the wild rags zines back in the day also. Wow, yeah, Richard C. <laughs> yeah, Richard C. I think you're going to want to yeah. tune in. I think you're going to want to tune into uh, the show on Thursday when we interview Enrique from Sadistic Intent and stuff. 
because he's had some ties with Wild Rags. Hopefully he'll want to talk about it because Wild Rags has been this mystery for many, many, many years. He just dropped off the face of the earth and no one knows. Well, people know, but nobody's talking. So we'll see. We'll see. That would be a good one. Sadistic Intent's been around forever. Forever. Fucking right. Um, and some more labels, some more issues, uh, uh, CDs that have come out on CDN Records. Uh, what is that? Cryophilic? Yeah, that one, um, it, that's another one. I think uh, we pressed uh, f- uh, full pressing with the band. That was a split deal. And uh, I think I only got about 20 left. So it's been wow. one of those ones this is a thing I tell a lot of the bands on my label also is Google yourselves. I know it sounds stupid, but if you want to see what I'm doing, check the internet out and put in your CD and just put the words after it for sale. And then you'll find every distro I sent it to. And I get bands that do that and they're like, well, we're in China. And I go, yeah, I trade with people in China, Russia, Germany, Japan, Australia, South America. I trade with everybody. So that was a really good CD. That moved well. Um, Bastard Saint, uh, Bastard Son moved really well. Um, there's been a lot of good, really, how do I put it? Um, musicianship is getting better and better and better all the time. Every time I hear a new Canadian band, I'm just like, wow. Even they're trying to do the old school stuff, but it still sounds like, wow, holy shit, this is. When I can listen to one something I put out. Keep listening to it. Right. Don't grab it. Listen to it again. That's what I like. And most of my releases, I'm like that. Um, I'm trying to think what else has come out lately. I'm sorry, my mind's just. Uh, no, no, no. There's a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> uh, another one, another great band that I put out. I put out kind of like a. I don't want to call it a best of, but I had a lot of stuff. Was that rotting CD, The Forgotten? Mm. That band was back in the day. Oh, they were incredible. Yeah. Uh, hold on a sec here. I have the... Shit, where is it? God damn it, I just had it. I have the... Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah, so... Actually, let me take this out because I ended up putting it in a, a blue case. But... Yeah, the rotting... Where is it here? Yeah, the forgotten... This was this was released. When was this released? God, don't ask me questions. Come on. Uh, I I got to think these ten, fifteen years ago. Oh shit! Yeah, that long ago, eh? And this read. This was some demos on here, correct? Yeah, there's some demos, some uh, release tracks or something. Yeah. It was just one of those ones that. uh, like Corey, the singer, just had incredible vocals. Like, oh my God, did he? Ever... That was another band. Uh, there, there, there's, that... there's the crushed album on United Guttural. That was the original yeah. there. Yep. But yeah, there's, there's, there's others. There's, uh, sorry, I just want, I want to stay on rotting for a sec. Though. Uh, yeah, they released two, yeah. they released two new tracks. On this, the the forgotten. Do you still have copies of this? I do. I actually, funny story. A label I traded them with couldn't sell them, so I traded them back for them. <laughs> couldn't sell rotting. <laughs> yeah, they, it was just one of those ones where it just the guy had trouble selling it, and he. I asked him, and he's like, "Yeah, I got ten copies." And I said, "I'll take all of them." He said, "I'll move them in a week." Holy shit. But yeah, there's two new tracks on here. Uh, Bear Attack and I Want You Dead. And I remember uh, we played with uh, we played with Rotting a couple times too, my old band. And when they played these tracks, Bear Attack and I Want You Dead, I have friends to this day that are just like, what was that fucking band that you brought down? And they played those songs like Bear Attack and everything, man. Like they were catchy as fuck. Fuck, like holy shit, man. And the fact that they yeah. only put out two new tracks. Yeah. Oh, oh. So, so, do you have that then? No, I don't have that demo. I'll put that in the 
pile of demos you don't have that I have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is are those demos? Are those demos on that CD, The Forgotten? Um, I'm not even sure to be honest with you. I would have to take a look. But that's a band that should have been huge. That Seriously. Band was, when they played live, man, there were pits, people flying all over the place. Yep, honestly, man, they had a fucking groove to themselves. Unbelievable, man. It was great. And then Corey, Corey ended up going on to do uh, Burning Caskets after that, too. Uh, yes, he did. Yeah, which was a great yeah. band. And then he tried uh, for a little bit. He had a, a, like a really brutal, slammy kind of band called Sewer for a bit also. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm not sure if they actually There's... recorded anything, though. Yeah, they were good. They mm. were good. Um, something else that just came out on CDN, too, that I, I just slipped my mind because I'm almost out of them, is Gut of the Lives. Like Killing oh, Desire. they're from Rochester. Rochester. Oh, yeah. It's, I'll be honest with you, it's their third album with me, and I'd love to sign them to a fourth one, and I hope they do, but I, I just don't know how much better they're going to get. Like Every album just gets better and better and better, and the, the Killing Desire, I listen to it all the time. It's just like, wow, that is some brutal shit. And it's been one that's moved really well. I mean, I'll be talking to Ryan and Jason from the band probably after COVID about doing a repress on that one, or if they're online, I just did. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, stuff like that, uh, I'm really happy. There's also uh, uh, another band that did really well for me, uh, Pleasure of Mutilate from South America. Okay. Um, just took a chance on them, heard it, it's kind of catchy, and that's what I do. I mean, my whole thing is if I can help a band out, um, I will, and I help them out, and I actually got two more albums coming out by them, so. Oh, shit. Like I said, a lot, there's a lot going on, man. <laughs> yeah, you're a busy dude, man. It's fucking awesome to see, man, and, and like you said, you put out stuff that you're going to listen to. That's the whole thing. I've, I call it, and I'll be honest with you, replay value. That's the way I do my whole thing. If I can listen to it and there's something that makes me want to play it again, I figure somebody else will. I've sat in rooms with people and played stuff for them, and all I do is stare at their feet. And they're thinking I'm nuts. But I'm looking for someone who's tapping their foot. <laughs> someone who's getting into it, who doesn't want to express it because they're a closet metalhead. Yeah. <laughs> but they can't stop it, so their feet will start tapping. And once I see that, I'm going, I got something here. Yeah. <laughs> it's true though honestly man you got it, it it it's like what cops and detectives do to to check out body language right you do the same thing with fucking listening yeah. to metal <laughs> yeah and i just do it because in the, the term closet metalhead there's so many of them down where i live that i've been in business for 30 years and i have one customer in the surrounding area. Everybody, but I go to a show and it's packed. Everyone's a closet metalhead. They don't want to do the mail order. They just want to do whatever they do. And I'm cool with that. I mean, different strokes for different folks. But when I watch some people and I watch foot tapping or if I go see a band that I'm interested in and nobody's into them, but you know, I'll look around at the crowd because half of them are closet metalheads who don't want to get out and mosh or throw themselves around or, you know. Yep. It's worked me up to this point because I think I've really signed a lot of really great bands with a lot of really great people in them. That's the other thing I look for. If a, if a band's going to be on my label, they have to understand, I'm going to do everything I can for you that I can afford. And I expect you to do everything you can do to help me get the stuff out there. So when I have one of my crazy sales, I expect all the bands to help out. Now, do they? It's hit and miss. Everyone has li life gets in the way, and I understand. But the fans I have on the label in the last probably five years have been really good. Um, I have one guy, in, I think he lives in Nevada, Zach Shaw, who actually has a Nephilistic mixes. If any of my bands go to him, he gives them a great deal. So it's helping everybody out, you know what I mean? Um, that's what CDN's all about to me. It's, I a, just like, it's a big fucking yeah, family. It is, and the whole thing too is... I'm not going to get rich doing this. I've been doing it for 30 years. I'm not getting rich. I just get music I get to listen to. Yeah. Uh, they job care of the money situation, so. Totally. But no, 
there's some uh, stuff. Uh, I want to go over some demos now that we said we were going to do. All right. Next to me. All right. All right. There. Yeah. Yeah. We uh, we 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 kind of figured that we wanted to uh, you know since we're on a Canadian kick uh, during during this one. Uh, we want to go back and check out some demos and see if if I've heard them or if he's heard them or vice versa. I don't know. I don't really have too many with me. Like I mean, you know, growing up, obviously, I did as much tape trading and I bought as much shit as I could. But death metal wasn't. I didn't. I didn't just like death metal. I loved punk rock. I loved hip hop. I loved skateboarding. I loved fucking BMXing. I loved everything. So my money went just to all kinds of shit. Because I just wanted a little bit of everything. I loved it all, right? So I know that you were fucking 100% full force into this shit from, like, the beginnings. So you got some stuff that is probably, like, it's going to make me blow loads. Well, first up, I'm going to do a band that I just introduced you to. Oh, there we go. You have, you have the original demo. That's Immortal Possession. Uh, can you, uh, can you move it around? I, no, you can't really see it, though. Uh, where are we here? There we go, there we go, right there. Immortal Possession. Oh, fuck, you have the original demo. Original demo? And they're now on my label. And you got, uh, and you got that back then? Yes, I've had that forever. Probably got it right from Chuck and didn't even know it. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's awesome, though, honestly, like. 30 plus years ago, you know, you fucking get these demos and stuff. And then all of a sudden it's like, Hey man, you want to work with us? <laughs> it's like, yes. <laughs> well, yeah. Like it was, it was strange with that situation with John and Chuck, because when I heard Votov, I was like, Chuck had approached me a while ago and I just had so much coming out. And then I just, I heard some more of it. And I was just like, yeah, yeah they gotta be on my label. They need to get that music across the world. And then I mentioned to him, well, hold on here. You got immortal possession. Let's do that too. But one thing I do with my bands, there's no rush. Chuck takes two years to record the immortal possession, which you know he won't. But if he did, I'm okay with it, man. Take your time. Life gets in the way. It's just, but I, that was a demo that when Chuck and John agreed to sign with me, I was excited about the vote off because their new stuff's incredible. Yep. Then I threw that up and I'm like, wow, this is double X. I got two great bands with two guys from both bands, which is excellent. <laughs> so, uh, next up, you know who this is. Oh, Cataclysm. Is that Death Gate Cycle? You better believe it. Oh, my fucking God, man. Oh, you have the fucking demo. That's insane. Where that did you, where did you first, where did you receive that from? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I got no idea. <laughs> and a lot of the times, yeah, and a lot of the times too, even back then, you just ordered the stuff from the bands, right? Because, I mean, that's everybody was low-key at that time. Yeah, it's it was one of those things where you'd get a, you did today from Botov, you get a stack of flyers, you see the Cataclysm demo, and it was like back then six bucks, and, yep. you know, post, so you put money in an envelope, wrap it in the newspaper so nobody saw it, send it to them, and then sit back and wait. Um, you yes. saw the flesh feet already. Yep. Have you, ever, have you ever heard this band? Chaosic? No. But yet, actually, Haytross ended up putting a, putting that out again. That's how I heard it. Yes. It used to be, and same with the one that you want very bad, the Gorlas Morkia. Yes. They're all on New World Symphony. Remy put these out. Uh, so God damn. I access. God damn, yeah. man. <laughs> you ever heard these guys? Dead Jesus? I'm drawing a blank there. Yeah, look them up. They're from Edmonton. They actually, I think, have a couple albums out. They, um... The one demo I didn't grab that I might take you over later to show you the 900 demos I have sitting there. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember these guys? Um, Nefarious. Yes, I actually have a CD somewhere. I believe it after that demo. 
Yeah, so it should have a green cover. Yes. Green on the cover. Yeah, it's got like a world or something on there or whatever. Yep. Where were they from? Um, somewhere in Ontario, Goldchester. Oh. Some place. I don't know if it's the Oshawa area, Ottawa area. Um, yeah, they had a they they had a they had a different style to them. They it was brutal, but it wasn't just death metal. There was something to it though. Yes, they they had a flair. That's what I call it. Yes. Here's a band. I think you know this band. Inbred. Ah, uh, hold on. There we go. There it is. Fucking inbred from Oshawa, man. I talk to Andrew, the guitarist, all the time, man. And I actually ended up putting it up on uh, iTunes. And it's on iTunes and Spotify and everything. If you want to check out Inbred, they're uh, originally from Oshawa. And again, friends with Mike Campbell, who did the uh, the Sepulchral Voice and everything. Part of that whole Oshawa crew. Holy shit, man. Unbelievable. And especially um, uh, Nailed, which was... Um, the guitarist from, oh shit, what the hell was his name? The guitarist from that band ended up playing with Soulstorm with Nick Sagius for a bit over the last few years. He's not in it now, but about four or five years ago, he joined forces with Nick Sagius on Soulstorm, and they came down to the radio show, and it was unbelievable because I haven't seen, fuck, what the fuck is his name? God damn it. Anyways, you can just look at, hey. why was it Andrew? No, no, not not inbred on nailed. Okay, no, the nailed. nailed the nailed band, but he ended up playing on Soulstorm for for the last few years. So that was unbelievable. It was kind of like a family reunion when he came down. We talked on the radio. And I was like, holy shit, dude! I haven't seen you since we fucking booked you '93, kind of thing, right? Like, holy crap, man! Now you're playing with Nick Sagius, who is Overthrow. You know, Soul Storm, Tribe of Pazuzu now, and I believe he's in Nihilist Death Cult. There's a new, he's starting a new band now, too. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. That's just okay. Totally. What else you got? What else you got? <laughs> Gastric Pus. You have the original. Oh, man. Again, there's another band. Uh, book them also. That was Kelly from Inner Thought. Uh, did he play in Inner Thought? Yeah, I believe he was the singer in Inner Thought with uh, Rob Urbanati, right? Yeah, was it Inner Thought one of the guys from, from from Slaughter? Yes. Yes, it was. Oh, fuck. God damn. What Hold was on, his name? What was his name? Shit. Because I ended up seeing Inner Thought play with... Uh, with Cryptopsy and Cataclysm, uh, just I think just before Sorcery came out and just before Blasphemy Made Flesh came out for those bands. So I ended up seeing them because Inner Thought was on Black Mark, I believe. Inner Thought. There it is. There it is. Is it Black Mark? Uh, Witch Hunt Records is this copy. Witch Hunt. Bob Sadik. And, uh, Bob sat. That's it. Holy shit! Uh, the names are here, but I'm too old. My eyesight's too bad. I can't think of them. Can't even see it. <laughs> here's, a, here's a band that got. I think they put actually a couple out of them. What is that? Cuvetus from Quebec. Oh, that. I've never seen that logo. Yeah, yeah, they, uh, it's really good stuff. To me, they were like Vader. Yep. The early really stuff, at least. Go back. Uh, the other demos I have in the back, uh, Sacramento Theory Abolishment of Edmonton. I don't know if you ever heard them. I think, and don't quote me on this, but a couple of members or one member, Jay, I don't know if it's Jay Reed or somebody, he did Revenge. Mm. The War Metal Band. Yes. Um, um, and, and a lot of other ones. I got a couple I just want to throw at you for shits and giggles that aren't Canadian, but you were talking about them the other day. Uh, well, we got, was that Embalmer? 
Embalmer into the oven into the and rotted o- remains. Uh, rotted remains? What's that? Uh, rotting remains. That's Rot- demos, man. Rotting remains. Oh, shit. Yep. See? School me. School me, please. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> I, I think every... Uh, I might be taking over the interviews from now on. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Here's one that... Here's one that I didn't even know I had until you told me to start looking for stuff. Cyanide demo. Oh, shit. I have... <laughs> I didn't even know I had it. And it's Cyanide, the guys from... Uh, States. Yeah. Even though I had it. They're from uh, Chicago. Denmark. Oh, Denmark. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, yeah. Uh, fuck. What the fuck's his name? Um, oh, God. I was talking to him, too, and he's having a hard time. He was in He was in Rippy Corpse, right? Yep. Yes, New yeah. Jersey. Yeah, yeah. New Jersey, guys. There's one you talked the other night that uh, I can't see. We're a little blurry right now. They deadened. Deadened. Von Young. What's up with that? What? 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 What is that? Uh, something on the flesh of the something. <laughs> uh, feast on the flesh of the dead. Oh, jeez. I haven't heard that. I've only heard hymns of the sick. And Von Young, he hangs yeah, out. He's. That was, uh, yeah, totally. He hangs out and, and, and watches this, man. That's hilarious. Holy shit. Because he started doing uh, guitar playthroughs about dead and stuff because everyone's like, I mean, everybody loves Lividity, his new band, but Deaden is the one that everybody talks about because, I mean, that was there at the, you know, not the birth of Brutal Death Metal, but the late 90s, early 2000s that we keep bringing up all the time, man. That era there is unfucking believable man. That is cool as shit. Uh, all right, well, what about, uh, you remember, uh, Exotoxic? No, where are they from? They're from Montreal. And, and actually, they got back together over the last couple years, and I met the guitarist, uh, shit, Stefan. And, uh, yeah, I met him in Montreal for the first time since we did tape trading back in the day, too. So this is kind of like a grindcore death metal kind of album or demo. And, uh, yeah, their new shit's fucking great. Uh, I don't know. Like, let me see here. I, can, I need, need some lights here. Hold on. Let's see. Oh, yes. Massification. If anybody remembers this didn't, band. Somebody in that band, didn't they die in a car accident? Yes, unfortunately. Yes, indeed. And uh, um, actually, oh, fuck. I am lose, I'm losing names on here right now. The one guitarist, Randy, Randy Harris, he's actually playing on Tribe of Pazuzu with Nick Sagius. Oh, good, good. That band that he was in back in the day, the one you showed me, they were awesome. Massification, man. Holy shit, man. Like, there was death metal, but there was a grind aspect to it. But it was clean, man. It was so cool. Uh, here's a local band. Were I don't... They... What's that? Go ahead. Was Massification, were they from Woodstock? Uh, Ingersoll. Ingersoll, okay. Ingersoll. Uh, I don't know. These, these guys were, 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 were local guys from my area. Crucified. Crucified. They were a, they were like a thrashy, thrash kind of, not generic, but, you know, a lot of bands back in the day, they, they kind of did their own thing or whatever. But, uh, yeah, Crucified, they were actually from Niagara Falls. They were right from the hometown here. Uh, and I only have, unfortunately, just a, a like a tape tape, uh, but it's, you ever hear the band De- Degeneracy? Degeneracy. Here's another one too. This one, um, uh, actually, uh, when I did the interview with uh, Ken Escobedo from Ken's Death Metal Crypt, he brought this band up, and then I totally forgot that I had. I was like, I think I have a, a Degeneracy because there was there was usually like one or two bands with the same name back then, just as it is now, 
And I end up checking out one of my, you know, tape tapes. And lo and behold, Degeneracy from fucking 1992, man. Holy shit. Good shit there. But, uh, but there's so much. Some of that Yes, we got, yeah, I know. We, we almost got to sit down with my tapes, your tapes, and then just start giving each other freaking our dumb copies, start tape trading again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have my list that I, I uh, finally compiled after all these years, and uh, last count there were 900 demo cassettes. And it's just, there's so much stuff, and just, I sit back and I, I don't even know where I got half of it from. Right. And then I, well, it's just, but just to look at it, that's why cassettes are back right now because with vinyl, vinyl took off. Everyone's buying vinyl after that big fire in California. That that plant with that makes the lac the lacquer form. Yep. I guess there's delay in vinyl, so people are jumping on cassettes because they can touch it. It's nice and it's it's from you know I'm 50. I remember cassettes you know back when I was 10. Yeah. You know so. It's nice to see them. That's why I'm glad we're putting them out in that. So, no, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, good Canadian stuff that's old. There's a lot of stuff I still am looking for um, that I'd like to get. I have a lot of dub tapes too that uh, we were talking about. Like I got sacrifice demos, everything. It's all on dub tapes from person to person to person. So yeah, that was our bootlegging back in the day. I guess you'd want to call it right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But you know what? At the time, then you heard the band, and you go to the show and buy a shirt. Well, so that's just it. Have, yeah, you know I mean? that's exactly how it worked. Like I like, like I mentioned, man, you, you, you tape tapes for each other, and then you end up tape trading with friends or whatever like that. But literally, as soon as you found out that there was a band playing or that you can just grab the demo or whatever, you actually grabbed the copy because it was like, okay, now I need to hear the original copy not a dub a dub a dub a dub usually which is the case right yeah and yeah, no it's uh, it's most reminiscing about all this old stuff it's uh i love it and there's other demos too uh, i was going to show you but we'll save it for another night i got some personal stuff that actually nobody else has i have the only copy of it um actually a friend of mine jared anderson who uh, was in uh i'm going to butcher the name of it uh internecine oh he also sung for angel I have a demo tape that sits for year or years only. And it's just stuff that he played because we used to write back and forth to each other. And that's just stuff just, it blows me away when you sit back and think they took the time to record it, send it to you in the mail, which takes forever. And then you can sit and listen to it. And since then, obviously he's passed on, unfortunately, but it's, uh, it's interesting collecting the demos. I really enjoy it. I mean, now I'm a, I also collect vinyl like crazy, which you know, but it's been interesting. I wish I could do vinyl for CDN bands, but Canada postage just kills you some. some Literally. Honestly, what does it cost for fucking to send a vinyl out? To send one vinyl from my house to Europe is $36. Holy shit. <laughs> like, it's not even so, fair. No, no. You have to be a collector, even still. In the States, I'm buying stuff for records for 20 bucks, paying $35 postage and from the States. But I'm a collector and I want that. Right. So, but it is what it is. I mean, wow. well, uh, I always say people that listen to Happy Metal probably most of them have a CD because we collect everything. Yeah, literally. I know if you can't get it on vinyl, you get it on CD. If you can't get it on CD, you get it on tape. <laughs> yeah, they, they, every single thing that band's ever put out, even if you don't like it, you still got it because that's the way it is. Yeah, literally, man. Oh, it's terrible. What does it cost to ship a vinyl to the states? Uh, around the states, you're gonna be over twenty bucks, sixteen to twenty bucks. And uh, a lot of people, like the states. One thing I've been lucky with CDN Records is we've been my IT guy um, who lives in I think it's Serbia. He really jumped on the U.S. dollar. So when I sell something for ten bucks, cost a guy in the states seven bucks because of the exchange rate. Right. And it kind of, I always wanted to put vinyl out. I have a vinyl dealer who could get me vinyl, but it's just sitting on five hundred pieces of vinyl. No one, people are going to be like, "Yeah, I want to buy it, but the post is just too high." Yep. Yeah. And I hear it all the time, and um, I have some releases that I'd love to put out on vinyl. You know, I win a lottery, I'll put them out on vinyl. <laughs> 
Yeah, just put it out. Doesn't matter if you make money on it or not. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> no, it's it's true though, man. Vinyl is like everybody wants it. It's freaking awesome to look at and everything like that. But like you said, man, the shipping on this shit nowadays is just astronomical. I had uh, actually the, the the lady's daughter. She just sent a T-shirt out to fucking BC, and it cost her seventeen dollars to ship a fucking T-shirt. It's, it's insane. Right? Um, what I'm trying to do with my bands that I'm signing now, I've been working with uh, Mike Ramirez from Transcending uh, Records out of uh, Illinois, I think. Um, he does vinyl. He does a lot of vinyl. So I'm trying to get him interested in my releases to put on vinyl. And that deal will be between, between the band and him. Or right. you know how many they get if he presses it. But it's just to get it out there for him. But yeah, he... I love vinyl. I collect vinyl. I have my top five bands that I have everything from them. And uh, postage kills. Yeah, totally. So what are your top five bands then? Come on. <laughs> Here we go. Well, you know, I fanboyed at uh, at the Quebec Death Fest when I met uh, Jeff from Possessed. That was, that was, a, that's unbelievable, man. And same, same with me. Um, I didn't stick with Possessed, but Seven Churches, though. I remember a buddy of mine had the tape. He borrowed it from a friend of ours from high school. Actually, it was before high school, just before high school. And uh, I remember going to a, a wedding, and my it was my my parents' friend's son, whatever. But that's the time when I was just starting to get into really heavy shit. Like I just found uh, uh, Under the Influence by Overkill, and then Possessed Seven Churches came into my hands, and Slaughter, obviously Strapato. And literally, those three tapes, man, for the whole weekend of this fucking wedding, I did not want to talk to anybody because I was like, this shit is so heavy, I can't believe it. Like, what is going on here? I don't even know. And then, like you said, we, Quebec, thank God, you know, I'm, I'm doing we're doing this documentary. So, Jeff Becerra, we have to talk to him because, you know, obviously, fucking Possessed are one of the bands that started you know, getting shit just super heavy. And like you said, man, it, we kind of just fanboy right there. You're just kind of, you're kind of like, yeah, man, it's just Jeff Becerra. It's going to be cool. Uh, hey, hey, Jeff, uh, how, how are you doing, man? Uh, everything, yeah, I like your band. <laughs> it was, uh, it was, it was something. Cause I, I, and I told him straight uh, when we had our conversation with him, uh, I'm doing what I'm doing today because of his band. I still remember walking in Devonshire Mall in Windsor. I looked, I saw seven churches. I saw the back of it. I'm all standing there with the cross upside down in the blood. And I said, this is going to piss off a lot of people. And I went, I need this. I got it. <laughs> I home and I just went. I used to fall asleep with headphones on listening to Beyond the Gate. I used to actually, my parents would have to come in and actually shut it off. It was on all night. It would just be on repeat. Wow. Uh, that was for one band. I had so many records by them for a band that only put out three and a half. I probably had so many live shows and everything. <laughs> Second band is, uh, is Deaf. Uh, they were Pull the Plug. That was a song. It was uh, it was incredible when that album came out and I got that and Spiritual Healing. Then they went their way. But that's another band I collect everything of now. The other band, since I don't listen to death metal all day long, yeah, uh, I, I love Opeth. I've loved Opeth since their first album, and uh, again, I have everything I can by them. Um, when you come down here finally to take a look around, you'll see records of Opeth that there's only three in the world, and I have a copy of it. I paid a boatload for it, but <laughs> wow! Because uh, I remember yeah, uh, I see no, we see Opeth with. Um... Oh shit! Who the hell did they play with? I think they, I think they, they played at the Opera House with. Uh, I don't know if it was Lamb of God. Fuck! What tour was that? It was it was for Blackwater Park too, and we ended up doing an interview with 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 M Mikel too, and man, what a show! And what a nice guy! Like he was genuinely like, come on down, guys. Like, let's let's just hang out, man. Let's not do an interview. Let's just talk and hang out. And it was, me and me and Metal Dan were just like, fucking hey, man. Great. This is this is awesome. 
And I like their new stuff. I do like their new stuff. A lot of people don't like the proggy era of it. I mean, they've always been proggy, but, you know, they had death metal elements. And uh, I like their new stuff, man, because I'm like, like I'm a 70s fucking analog prog rock guy, too. And I like that new shit. Yeah, I, I like everything they've done because, like you, I don't listen to death metal 24 hours a day. I listen to, you know, Opeth. I can listen to classic rock, stuff like that. And it's kind of nice for a change. Oh, yeah. Because the most of my life is listening to death metal stuff. Um, and, uh, another band that I'm, I'm really huge into is Baltimore. <laughs> you got to love some Baltimore. <laughs> Holy shit, eh? I remember, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember watching um, when I first heard Bolt Thrower. It was the Grindcore compilation, obviously Grind Crusher. That was pretty much a lot of, I think, a lot of people's gateway to everything heavy. And then seeing uh, World Eater on Much Music Power Hour back in the day too. And Much Music yeah. was was our MTV, obviously in Canada, and Power Hour was our metal you know, hourly, weekly show or two hours or something like that. And they would play everything from death metal to, you know, just a regular, some glam metal and just whatever. But man, when they fucking played World Eater, it was World Eater and then uh, Mass Appeal Madness by Napalm Death. When those two videos came on board, man, yeah. I just, <laughs> gay. <guy. laughs> Funny thing you mentioned, though, is Power Hour. One of the... I guess they were called VJs. Yep. Did you know where he went on to? He does, I don't know if he still does it, but it was J.D. Roberts who ended up doing NBC Nightly News. Yes, yes, that's right, that's he used right. He to do the power, power. Wasn't like, he? Wow, this guy interview Sacrifice and all these bands, and now he's doing the news. Wasn't he part of, uh, wasn't he part of like uh, Toronto Rocks or something like that also? Yeah. Right. So we're going back to the 80s again, like when, you know, much music and, and MTV started up, you know, and it was like the early 80s, really. And then mid 80s, they, they started honing in on, you know, genres and everything. And then the VJs started become like mini celebrities and stuff. So J.D. Rock.